No, actually, you know what? Fine. We'll, we'll, we'll check it out now. See what's going on. I'm too curious. Two of the largest bank failures in history happened this week. But before we talk about why, I have a question. Why is Jim Cramer so good at being so bad? <laughs> True. At Just months before they yes. both collapsed, he said this. These are never, ever talked about. Why? Because they're too boring? I like to make money. Boring is good. Watch out for Signature Bank. That's my fave. SB so... In, I, I don't know if Coffee Zill is going to touch on it, but this is very serendipitous. I was just reading about Jim Cramer. There's also something called the Inverse Cramer Fund, I think is the official name, where you it's a portfolio where you invest the opposite of everything Jim Cramer preaches, and it, it's actually far better than if you followed his advice. But interestingly enough, Jim Cramer is one of the biggest shills in American history from everything I've read. What happens is he is literally paid for like a little fucking puppet, like a little fleshlight, People use him, the very elite, they pay him to promote stocks that are about to fail. So this is why you'll always see him preaching about something just like a month or two before it collapses. So he'll start preaching about it, get people to buy into it, so that way those shareholders can sell at the highest peak right before the collapse. I actually read quite a bit about Jim Cramer. That's like one of the leading theories. He is a massive con man. Just a, like a true and blue con man. It's wild. I can't believe he's been on the air for as long as he has. That's the leading theory, at least. Allegedly. I'll throw in allegedly, just in case Jim happens to be watching. Well, it's more than that, though. Like, he is... He is an absolute rat. Jim Cramer is a fucking rat. He's just... He is just a shill. He gets paid to promote shit stocks, so that way it can pump just a little bit before a collapse of investors... Or shareholders can get out without losing their ass on it. From everything I've read, at least. All of the, uh, allegations. That seems to be the leading theory. That's wild, because I was actually just reading about this a couple days ago. Financial, don't you want? This company's a merchant bank with a deposit base the Wall Street have been mistakenly concerned about. This morning, we witnessed the second largest bank failure in American history, which naturally created a wave of fear as the day went on. Hence, the Dow ultimately losing 345 points, S&P falling 1.45 percent, and the Nasdaq tumbling 1.6 percent. Is he drunk? Now I have to admit, he's really simmered down over the years. He used to be like really coked out, but the last five or six clips I've watched of him over the last month or so, he seems so fucking out of it. Like he's perpetually in this drunken stupor on his show. He has a way with sound effects. Now I understand why they call it Mad Money. But there is one thing Jim Cramer isn't wrong about which I know is shocking. Fear is in the air, and many are worrying, is my bank you said, safe? Your mom so don't today I thought we'd break it all Lord down. Tier one, Jesse. Recent collapses, why the government has announced a hey, special bailout, like a carp. why some Thank people you. are happy with it, and others are mad. And, of course, what's next? Let's start with the facts. Three major banks in the United States have failed in a short period of time. Silvergate, Signature Bank, and Silicon Valley Bank. Now, Silvergate was the smallest with about 11 billion in assets. Signature was like the mid-sized one, and Silicon Valley Bank was the SVB largest. was a big boy. Now, Silvergate and Signature SVB Bank went big. were well known in the crypto space, while Silicon Valley Bank was massive in the tech startup world. However, despite their differences, these banks failed for similar reasons at a high level, which is this. They all experienced a run on the banks when mm -hmm. too many people demand too much money too fast and the banks don't have cash on hand. Now, I want to make something mm -hmm. clear. It would be easy to draw the comparison to the crypto crash in 2022 when several crypto companies like FTX collapsed, but there's an important difference. Companies like FTX were insolvent. When there was a run on their banks, they had no money to give. Whereas the banks we're talking about were illiquid, meaning they had the money, but when they had the bank run, some of it was locked up in long-term assets like bonds. Now, to be clear- Oh yeah, SVB was big in bonds, right? That was one of the principal things. I think SVB was huge on bonds. I don't know about Signature and Silvergate, but I know SVB in particular was like a big bond one. In the, in the bits hero not the same things Welcome, Ducky. at all. But things can get a little fuzzy in the details. For example, when a bank run happens, what can start as a liquidity problem can become an insolvency problem if the bank has to sell what they have for cash. And let me explain. One of the safest investments is considered to be treasury bonds. 
your grandparents probably invest yep. in it banks invest in them both for the same reason my right? grandparents they did a stable for sure rate of return so say your signature bank right you've got billions of dollars in customer assets where do you put it well into treasury bonds which let's say earn you one percent a year you keep some cash on hand for withdrawals but you figure look if i need to sell these i can sell my bonds right but what happens if interest rates rise really quickly well, suddenly you have this five-year bond you bought a year ago, which gives you 1% a year, but now the government is selling the same five-year bond and offering 5%. Because of that, now your bond's value on the open market drops. It's no longer even worth what you paid for it because it's giving less interest than other bonds. And so if you try to sell that, well, now you lose money. Now, to be clear, if you held the bond to maturity, well, you would still make that 1% and not lose anything. But when depositors are asking for cash, it's simply not an option to hold on. Yeah, now, I to, know that seems complicated, make it but whole. the essence of it is this. <clears throat> Banks were forced to sell long-term assets that they didn't want to sell, like bonds, and they took losses because of these bank runs. Because of that, what started as a liquidity crisis became an insolvency crisis and that's why they got shut down because they weren't going to be able to service all those withdrawals so now what right doesn't the government guarantee bank deposits why are we even talking about this well these are some jumbo spooky kind of, and woody the fdic Tony, insures neat. up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars per account however at places like silicon valley bank they had a lot of accounts with a lot more than that because as we spoke of, they hosted a lot of venture capital startups that Woo! might have had it. God damn, that's right. This was Roku. Roku got blasted. I'm not super familiar with Circle, but Jesus Christ. Even Roblox. Goodness. Anywhere from 10 to $50 million in there. And suddenly, that company, which was healthy yesterday, now can't get access to that money and, and only fdic insured up to 250k yikes and this triggered a huge response from many in silicon valley to call for depositors to have their money guaranteed with people like jason calacanis saying you should be absolutely terrified right now that is the proper reaction to a bank run and contagion guarantee all deposits up to 10 million dollars or this will spiral into chaos and comments like this sparked a huge debate on whether the government should or would get involved. Ultimately, with the answer coming on Sunday when the U.S. Treasury said this, quote, depositors will have access to all of their money. And there you have it. The U.S. government is stepping in to save not only Silicon Valley Bank, but also Signature Bank as well. They did nice. this citing a systemic risk exception, which really boils down to a single idea uh please don't panic guys please don't please don't take out your money <laughs> ultimately the u.s government doesn't yeah. want you worried about your bank deposits however not everyone saw this as a win many were quick to point out that once again the government only seems to step in to help a certain type of person quote mark cuban bail out silicon valley bank tonight feds approved goldman sachs needs 824 billion approved JP Morgan Chase needs 416 billion. Approved. Average Joe, my wife has cancer. Can we get Medicare? We're broke. Now, I do have to tell you that those in favor of the Fed's actions will tell you that this is an unfair characterization, that it's not the super rich getting bailed out. They'll point out that this isn't a traditional bailout at all because it only applies to the depositors and that executives and shareholders will get nothing. And that sounds good, except for the fact that some executives and shareholders in Silicon Valley Bank had already cashed out with Oof. Greg Becker, the CEO, selling $3.6 million worth of his shares right before their collapse. And That's not it suspicious. Gets even worse when you consider that totally Greg normal. Becker was one of the people who lobbied to deregulate his own bank. According to Heather Landy of Courts, quote, the ability of these banks to fly under the radar in the U.S. was no accident. Greg Becker, SVB's CEO, lobbied U.S. officials planet. several years ago to raise the asset threshold Ezekiel, at which banks Tokyo, would be considered systemically important. So let's get this straight. They faced less regulatory scrutiny because they weren't systemically important, according to them. But when everything goes wrong, they're systemically risky and must be bailed out. It's a classic case of wanting it both ways. Now, again... This isn't the same as the full bailouts we saw in 2008. And regardless of whether you land on whether there should have been or should not have been a bailout, 
the idea that systemically risky banks should get special treatment and regular banks, I guess, don't, sends a pretty clear signal. If you're rich, you should move your money into banks that are too big to fail. Otherwise, you run a systemic risk of ending up on Jim Cramer, feeling like this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, that was a really succinct breakdown of it. Nice. Yeah, so bank run. Across the board then, eh? Bond's gonna go down because that's how feds do bailout. Yeah, that sounds right, but I don't know.